Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. The Ole Miss Rebels come in at number 20 and are way too early top 25. The Rebels are fresh off a historic 10-3 season under Lane Kiffin, a season that saw them get all the way to the Sugar Bowl before ultimately falling to Baylor. And the Rebels enter 2022 with a few questions, namely at the quarterback position. Star quarterback Matt Corral, who got hurt in that Sugar Bowl loss to Baylor, is gone, departing for the NFL. And the Rebels had to find someone to fill that gap. And Lane Kiffin, the king of the transfer portal, as many have called him, went out and got Jackson Dart from USC to replace him. A huge pickup. They got Zach Evans in at running back from TCU. And so an offense that was losing a ton of key pieces was quickly replenished through the transfer portal. And guys, I'm telling you, if Ole Miss can fix up their defense a little bit, one that certainly showed improvement in 2021 but needs to take an even bigger step forward in 2022, they do that, and they could be in for another very special and historic season down in Oxford. But before we do get into that, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Again, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Again, if you love college football content, you love NFL content, we are the place for you. So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, get that notification button so you don't miss any of our future videos. Uh, again, those things that take you just a few seconds to do help our channel out tremendously. So help us out, help our, our channel grow, and really just become a part of our Gridiron Expert team, not just now, but for the entire college football season. So make sure to do that, guys, going forward. We have tons of schedule previews coming up, prediction videos coming up, tons of content you do not want to miss. Uh, and again, we appreciate all of you and all of your support in helping our business and helping our channel grow. When we take a look at Ole Miss, guys. Again, we mentioned how great of a year 2021 was. Ole Miss entered with high expectations. We knew they were going to have one of the more electric offenses in the country, and they certainly did. Again, the only losses last year for Ole Miss coming to Auburn, Alabama, and Baylor in that Sugar Bowl. And many believe that if Matt Corral hadn't gotten hurt, maybe Ole Miss would have won that Sugar Bowl and clinched an 11-win season. But regardless, expectations are once again high in Oxford. They did a great job of utilizing the transfer portal. Jackson Dart should thrive under Lane Kiffin. The offense as a whole should continue to thrive. Yes, they lost Jeff Levy over to Oklahoma. But regardless, the Rebels are in a good place if they can continue to improve on defense. But you look at their schedule, guys. It's relatively favorable. It's a relatively favorable schedule for the Rebels to once again make some noise, not just in the SEC, but nationally. Because when I look at their schedule, things to me really don't start to get tough until maybe October 15th, maybe October 22nd. Troy and UCA, UCA to open up the year, Central Arkansas Week 2, none of those should really cause the Rebels much trouble. I like the matchup at Georgia Tech in Week 3. I think that's a very intriguing, under-the-radar, uh, non-conference matchup. One that I think Ole Miss will be favored in. One that more than likely Ole Miss will win. Uh, but that does give the Rebels a bit of an early test. Not against one of the elite non-conference opponents, but certainly one that's on the road they can't take lightly. Uh, Georgia Tech team that is showing improvement. But after that, Tulsa. Kentucky, Vanderbilt, out of those first six games, I genuinely think Kentucky will be the toughest of those six. And the Wildcats, we've, they were in our top 25, posted about them just a few days ago. Certainly going to be no slouch, especially on the offensive side of the ball with Will Levis and Chris Rodriguez Jr. returning on offense. So the Wildcats are not going to be a slouch, but Ole Miss benefits from hosting Kentucky. The Wildcats have to go to Oxford. They should take care of Vanderbilt, arguably the worst team in the SEC. They certainly have the worst logo now. And after that, that's where things for me get tough for Ole Miss. So when you look at this schedule right off the bat, you got six games right there going all the way to that Vanderbilt game where Ole Miss could feasibly be 6-0. We're not predicting that. Our predictions will come out much later. But if Jackson Dart lives up to the hype, if the defense starts to get going, there is a very good chance that Ole Miss could be 6-0 and maybe even 7-0 if they get past Auburn. Yes, they lost to the Tigers 31-20 to last year, uh, but the Tigers have a lot of questions going into this season. They had a lot of scandals going on in the offseason. Brian Harson was not fired. Obviously, we thought he was going to be let go. He was not, uh, but there's been a lot of off-field drama for Auburn, a lot of transfers at Auburn. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they react to that going into the season. But regardless, Ole Miss has a very promising start to the year. It's really from October 22nd to the end that things get difficult for Ole Miss, and that's going to really determine whether or not Lane Kiffin and his squad should be taken seriously at the national stage and whether they really are SEC title contenders in 2022. Because for me, the big stretch for the Rebels comes from LSU to Arkansas. From October 22nd to November 19th, 
That is the key four-game stretch for Ole Miss that will make or break their entire season, especially if they were to start 6-0, and 6-0, 7-0, and 6-1, seven and six and one, somewhere around there. And they have a very promising start up until that LSU game. These next four will determine how great of a season it can really be. Because you have back-to-back road games at LSU and at Texas A&M. Three of the four games we just mentioned are all on the road. Yes, we know the Ole Miss beat LSU last year, beat them 31-17. They beat Texas A&M, 29-19. They beat Arkansas, 52-51. So those three road games, Ole Miss beat all of them last year. All of them at home. It's a key word there. LSU dealing with a new coach and Brian Kelly. We don't know what to expect from LSU. Hopefully better than what they were last year, uh, but we don't think they're going to be some national title contender right out of the gate. So that is a winnable game, but it is Death Valley, a very difficult place to play. College Station, a very difficult place to play as well. Texas A&M, once again, having very high expectations under Jimbo Fisher, especially with the way that he's been recruiting. They get the bye week before Alabama. If Ole Miss is somehow still undefeated, if Ole Miss is only a one-loss team coming into that game against Alabama, that could be the game that determines the SEC West. No doubt about it. Because once again, Alabama will be the favorite in the West. Everybody knows that. There's no reason to believe they wouldn't be. But coming off a week of rest to take on Alabama in Oxford, a team they lost to 42-21 to last year, if Ole Miss is a one-loss team or undefeated, that game will more than likely determine who wins the SEC West division. And Ole Miss, if they were a one-loss team or undefeated going into the Alabama game, they absolutely would be a top-four team in the country, maybe even the number-one team in the country. And that, to me, is if they're undefeated. But the Alabama game is huge. 100%, especially if Ole Miss is living up to the expectations. And then they get Arkansas on the road. We have seen so many instant classics in recent years between Ole Miss and Arkansas. Last year was arguably the best college football game of the season. The Rebels and the Razorbacks trading score for score, especially in the fourth quarter. Arkansas scored a game-tying touchdown as time expired, but chose to go for two to get the win. And the Razorbacks failed. Ole Miss survived at home 52-51. to but The Razorbacks no slouch anymore. At one point in time, many considered them to be the worst team in the SEC. Sam Pittman has quickly turned things around there. A lot of talent returning on offense. That defense being built up through the transfer portal. That game being in Fayetteville, where Ole Miss has not had much success lately. Could be a tough one and could be a letdown game, depending on what happens against Alabama. So again, that four-game stretch, LSU, Texas A&M, Alabama, Arkansas, those four games will dictate how well the season goes for Ole Miss. Because I really think the beginning of their season, the first six, seven games are very favorable. And I think Ole Miss will be favored in many, if not all of those games. It's how they respond to those three crucial road games there, especially the Alabama game, how they kind of determine, okay, hey, we are New Year's Six title contenders, we're playoff contenders, we're SEC title contenders, or hey, eight or nine wins is going to be our max this year. They conclude the season, of course, against Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl. They beat the Bulldogs 31-21 last year in a very sloppy game, a lot of rain there. They get to host that game, of course, in Oxford, uh, and that's going to be another game where the defense is going to be key, facing off against the air raid that Mike Leach is going to throw at them. Uh, But so far, the air raid has not really phased Lane Kiffin uh, during his time in Oxford. Only been there for a couple of years, but still hasn't really phased him too much. Uh, So again, guys, the Rebels... Looked very, very promising. Again, they're fresh off a 10-win season. They absolutely are a top 25 team in our eyes. A very favorable first half of their schedule. It's that back half that will really ultimately decide how the rest of their season goes and really will set the tone for the rest of the season. We see that with many, many teams across the country where they start off extremely strong, but then they start to face the tougher opponents on the back half and they collapse. And we go, oh, wow, they were 6-0 and at one point. Now they're 6-3, and 6-4. Uh, hopefully that will not be the case for Ole Miss. But it would not be shocking considering how brutal, again, those last five games are, but especially the four between October 22nd and November 19th. But regardless, Ole Miss will still be a force on offense. They will still have one of the best offenses, not just in the SEC, but in the country. And to me, with Lane Kiffin as your coach and with an offense like that, that will keep you in just about every single game and will give you a chance in just about every single game. So do not sleep on the Rebels, guys. They are a dark horse SEC title contender, a dark horse maybe playoff contender if you want to go that far. I will not, but hey, to each their own. But the Rebels will make some noise once again, both just in the SEC and nationally, and they're going to be a team to watch out for from start to finish. 
So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in that description below. We've got more schedule previews coming your way, and then we're moving right on to the next topic to get you to prediction season. So if you like this content, make sure to help us out and join our Gridiron Expert team today. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Thank you.